We are live. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'm a little nervous, but this is my first time doing this. All right, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Stacy Russell. Um, Bill and I, my husband, opened up CrossFit Cleveland in 2007, and we believe that seven to nine hours of sleep is a good, I'm sorry, seven to nine hours of sleep and good nutrition is a solid foundation for a healthy lifestyle. <clears throat> All right. Ashley, who some of you have seen already, um, I'd like to thank her. She's with Cryoactive and they are our sponsor. And she's going to tell you a little bit about Cryoactive and about the gift card that we are um, giving to somebody who's on here. So all you, Ashley. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, like Stacey said, my name is Ashley. I am here with Cryacta Wellness. Um, we are located in Rocky River on Detroit Road. We've been open for six years now, helping people reach their beauty and recovery goals. So for tonight, um, we are going to be giving away a core form membership. That is a membership for one month where you can mix and match four services. Um, our first service is Whole Body Cryo. Our customer go in there for three minutes and it's really good for inflammation, muscle recovery, arthritis, aches and pains, things like that. The second service it includes is local cryo. Um, so we would just apply local cryo to an injury like a shoulder, knee, your neck. Um, it's five minutes long. Um, the third service is called Normatec. That's our compression therapy. It's really good for muscle soreness and blood circulation. And then the last service it includes is our infrared sauna pod. Um, that's our heat therapy and it's good for detoxing, getting rid of water weight, activating your lymphatic system. Um, and that's a 30 minute service. So we just want to thank Stacey one more time for having this um, event for us, um, giving us all this wonderful information going into the holidays so we can all stay healthy and keep with our goals. So thank you, Stacey. Thanks, Ashley, I appreciate you. All right, so, all right. Thanks again, Ashley. Let's get started. During this, if anybody has any questions, if you put it in the chat box, I will get to all the questions at the end and I'll answer everybody's questions. Um, I hope to be thorough, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have any questions. Um, so here we are. The holiday season is, around, is right here and it came on fast. My first question to you is when you think about the holidays, what comes to your mind? Food. Oh, food. <laughs> Hopefully friends and family made the top three list, but obviously maybe Getting some thought about the hustle and bustle, the smells, the stress, the late nights, the food, but more specifically the treats and maybe even the alcohol. So after working mm -hmm. our health and wellness goals for weeks or even months, the holiday season seems to feel like a time when we're getting derailed. But what if I told you today, you can have your cake and eat it too. I mean, you can stay on track and um, still enjoy everything the holiday has to offer. I should tell you, and I tell all my clients this, I am not a dietitian nor a doctor. I've struggled with weight my life, throughout my life and I don't particularly care that work out, but I do. And I love food. So that's a little bit about me. Um, a little bit of background on HSN and why you see so much of them and what I do. Um, I met Nicole Co a coin back in 2018, who is the founder of Health HSN, Healthy Steps Nutrition. And I, I happened upon her while she was giving a speech and I was, Afterwards, I talked to her and she gave me her book and I was reading her book and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she and I are right in the same alignment of our thoughts on food and nutrition, that it doesn't need to be hard. It shouldn't be hard or difficult. And so I talked to her and we partnered with them and that's why I started with HSM. Um, I used to give nutrition help and I would give people information and I give them the worksheets and everything. And they'd ask a couple questions and I'd send them on their way. And some people would come back with no questions. They weren't doing it, except you, Jamie. I know you were very successful in this, but I was giving this information and people were not 
getting results. So after listening to Nicole and hearing how she does things, I realized that this was a good partnership and that's why I started with HSN. Um, our belief is something as fundamental as nutrition should not be complicated. We want you to feel confident and realistic and sustainable with a realistic and sustainable plan, even through the holidays, which is why the fo we focus on a habit-based approach, which anybody who knows me, that's what I do. I focus on the habits. So there you have it. That's why I partnered with HSN. And there, these people that you're seeing here, these are their clients. But Healthy Steps Nutrition has helped over 35,000 people, probably more at this point, around the world take control of their health. And like I said, these are some of their success stories. Um, one of the things that all these stories have in common is they're built on habits that left them confident and in any situation to be able to lose weight and keep it off, which is what I like to try to do for my clients. Okay, so... Oh, the scale. Don't you, don't we all love that scale? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody we know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Have you good. ever felt derailed or experienced weight gain during the holiday season? You are not alone. There is a scientific review article that found various studies to find this holiday season a starting at Thanksgiving and lasting to around the second week in January. In this review, they found that the average person gained over two pounds during this period and many as much as six and a half to 20 pounds. And I'll tell you, that's not cool for any of us. So if most people, whether they are aiming to lose weight or not, are gaining weight, you may be wondering how you can enjoy the holidays and still stay on track to achieve your goals. So that's what we're here to do is we're going to talk about the five tips to navigate the holidays and really any season. Um, so just so you know, this picture is that's Nicole and her husband. So that's who these people are. But number one, your my tip number one is remember your why. Everyone is different. And maybe you might want to lose weight. Maybe you want to feel good naked. Maybe you don't want to burden to your family as you get older. Whatever it is, we all have our own why. Behind every goal, there is an emotion of how we want to feel when we achieve this goal. And that's really important to note. So when we work with nutrition clients looking to lose weight, there's always a reason they want to lose weight. So I usually hear, I want to feel more confident. I want more energy. You know, those are the very typical. So the question becomes, why is your why so important that it's number one on our tip? So there was a study exploring the, the interconnections between goal setting and individual personality factors. And for 10 weeks, 41 people uh, received goal plans that were either given to them or they chose themselves. People who understood their why, why people who understood why the goal was necessary for them had a better chance of being successful with their, um, with their goals and getting there. So that's really important is to understand your why. So let's talk about that. Why? This is when it can get awkward. You must be honest with yourself. And this is one of the things I can help you with if you need. If you need help finding that why, I know what I do, but you have to be honest. So here's an example. Um, maybe your goal is I want to lose 10 pounds. Okay, cool. I might ask why. Um, you're thinking, I want to fit in those old clothes that are in the back of the closet, you know, those skinny clothes or those, um, even the, you know, you're keeping them. Why just, just in case clothes, or maybe even worse, you went to the store and you bought an outfit and you want to fit in it and you've never been there. So that is your, why you want to fit into that particular outfit. So let's think about why are those clothes important? You might think. I see pictures of myself wearing that particular outfit that's sitting in the back of the closet and I felt really good then. All right, so why is wearing those clothes and looking good important to you? Well, if I lost those 10 pounds, I might fit back into those and I felt really good and comfortable and I would be more confident in my own skin. So that is just a really quick example of why the goal is to continuously check in about why it's so important. 
So you see on that booklet, I don't know if anybody has it or or um, or printed it or whatever, but one of the first things is to write down your why, and then you see there's some space there. So you might want to like write down now your why. We're sitting here talking about it, so nobody's going to see it. Just write down your why, and um, you, you can do it later, but or just think about it. So think about what is your why. Are y'all writing? I can't see y'all. All right. Once you under, uncover and understand your why, think about having that goal someplace that you can see it. So maybe you put a sticky note on the on your mirror in the bathroom. You can even write it with soap on your mirror if you wanted. Maybe take that old picture that makes you feel good. Put that on your refrigerator. You want to have this in your forefront just to keep it visible. So you remember, you know, maybe when you're opening up that refrigerator, like, hey, I really want to get into that outfit and I'm just going to close this back up. Um, maybe you want me to come do a refrigerator clean out. So I'm in there. All right. Step number two, stay consistent. It sounds so easy. And yet we kind of all know it's not really that easy. If there was a magic pill, trust me, I would have already taken that a long time ago. The bad news is there is no magic pill, but the key for long-term success is consistency. <clears throat> Consistent actions lead to lasting results. Think about that. Consistent actions lead to lasting results. So even when you're traveling, going to parties, like the holidays, it's super important to stay consistent with your routine. Take a minute and just think about this. Like, do you have a daily routine? I mean, we all have a routine, but what is it? How much water do you drink? Um, how active are you? Um, what's your morning? What's your evening routine? We all have them. So staying in routine is um, what's keeping you consistent, right? All right. So while you're thinking about your routine, here are some tips to staying consistent during the holiday seasons, because that is what this is about, right? Five tips to keep you consistent during the holidays. Stick with your normal routine. If you have an extra exercise routine, stick with it. Block out that time on your calendar to stay active. It might not be exactly what a normal week looks like, but you're still making time for yourself. And that makes you a better human being for all those around us, right? Just saying. So I actually challenge you to tell your friends or family or whoever, hey, I can't meet you until one instead of noon because I'd really like to go for a walk or go to the gym or whatever it is. Does that work for you? And I guarantee you, somebody, they'll encourage you like, oh my gosh, yes, go do it. Or maybe they might want to join you or they might even be thinking like, gosh, she's really got it together. She's keeping her stuff together while she is still enjoying the holidays and there might be a little bit of envy there. So make your friends jealous. Say you're traveling and you don't have your normal routine there. That's okay. Like maybe go for a walk. Maybe somebody will want to join you. Um, maybe you just need a little bit of quiet time because there's so much family around. I don't know. Just saying. All right. Just because Thanksgiving is on a Thursday or whatever holiday or party coming up the weekend, it doesn't mean that you should let the whole week go to pot. Stay consistent with your food. If you're already meal prepping, you might just have to meal prep less. Um, by planning your week like normal, you will be able to stay consistent even on days like Thanksgiving. And don't worry, we'll get more into the nitty gritty of Thanksgiving. Lastly, sleep. Stay consistent with your sleep. Remember earlier I told you that um, Bill and I believe in seven to nine hours of sleep per night. We don't always get that, but it's actually scientifically noted and we don't have to get into all the specific, specifics of that, but our minds and bodies need seven to nine hours a day. Ideally, we should go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. And that's just not realistic. Here's the thing, when we aren't getting enough sleep, everything goes crazy, including our digestion, which can lead to bloating, maybe even making poor decisions on your food. Do yourself a favor and get your sleep, even if it's off your routine. 
that brings us to number three. Plan ahead. Here's another one of my good sayings. A goal without a plan is just a wish. You might want to write that one down. A goal without a plan is just a wish. This is so true. It's easy to tell, it's, it's easy to let all our hard work go to the wayside during this busy time. And since we're talking about the holidays, like I just said, we're going to stick to this topic, but it's really true throughout the year. I mean, after all things come up, we've got lunches and happy hours, whatever. If you stick to your plan, you are able to set yourself up for success. Some of this may seem repetitive, but if you plan ahead, you can stay consistent. So those two actually go hand in hand. Let's say you're traveling for the holiday. Awesome. Now, you're either you're going to the getting in your car or you're, you know, going to the airport. There is no need to go to the store and stock up on candy and chips and all those things that you would think about for a car ride, cookies or for the airport. You can pack some of your own vegetables. You cannot overeat those. So even if you're bored while you're doing that, and you're eating your vegetables, have at it. I would also recommend maybe putting some nuts in there, although careful because you can overeat those. Um, but if you have some snacks on the road, some vegetables, some um, almonds, maybe some uh, turkey jerky, even I know it's a processed food, but even some, you know, turkey, just rolled up turkey is going to be better than those chips and cookies that, sorry, mom, but what used to do growing up, right? We'd pack up and eat all the, all that stuff. Um, if you've never heard of RX bars, that's an easy travel snack. They um, are awesome. They have a little bit of protein and carbs and fat in them, and they're very filling. So don't waste your money on all the other crap, right? Bill always says, stop eating crap. Remember when we talked about being consistent when, eat, when eating, uh, even on days like Thanksgiving. So what does that really mean? One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is they're going to save up for their meal, right? They're going to starve themselves all day. Maybe you went on a turkey trot or whatever, but you're going to wait because you want that meal. That is likely to add, to cause you to overeat because you're starving, right? If you've had that breakfast, maybe you had an omelet filled with vegetables for breakfast, you're not going to go in starving. So you're less likely going to, to get off track because you're not starving. It's really just another meal that has some foods that you might not eat all the time. If you stay with your consistent with your eating routine, it will be easier to stay mindful and on track. So Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever it is, it's just another meal. So the other thing that you should be mindful of number tip number four is remember the plate method. So no matter where you where you are or what you're making for dinner, keeping the uh, track of the plate method is an easy way to keep yourself on track. So if you're thinking about your plate, half your plate in vegetables, about the palm of your hand in protein, and then starchy carbs, you know, potatoes, rice, all those good things. If you cup your hand, that's what it would look like. Or a, a measuring cup, one cup, doesn't seem like much. I know it's really not, but I mean, it's plenty. So if you're thinking about your potatoes and all the good stuff right in that little cup. If you remember tips two and three, be consistent and plan ahead, you should be able to go into any holiday or meal fueled and mindful. You're, you'll be fine. If, and you think about that plate method. You could do that, like even when you're out to eat and the general in the everyday world, if you just think about half your plate and vegetables, a little bit of protein, a little bit of carb. So here are a couple of my holiday tips. Bring a healthy dish to share. So how many, um, how often do we go to a meal like this and there's not a vegetable to be seen and green bean casserole is, you know, green beans disguised with all that other stuff in it. So I guarantee you, if you bring a vegetable tray to share or a healthy appetizer or a big salad, it will get eaten. People will actually thank you and appreciate that they have something there other than all that good stuff. Because although we all like it, people actually do like the other things that are, are good. 
So now you can fill your plate with some salad or maybe some green beans sauteed and tossed with some almonds is a good idea instead of the green bean casserole. You're still getting your green beans, right? So the next idea that I have is to eat your vegetables first and then maybe your protein. And then I like to save like my mashed potatoes, my all those good stuff. I save it for last. It's kind of like my dessert and I savor it. Remember to slow down when you're eating. Our brains are 15 minutes behind our stomachs. So oftentimes we overeat because we think we're not full, but are just it just took a while for the, the, the connection to get there. So if you sit back, enjoy your family, relax, eat, talk, and most likely you are going to be full with that awesome plate that you had. If for some reason you're not and you wanted to go back, salad, go for it. It might be gone already, but you don't have to, those mashed potatoes aren't going to keep helping you make, get you full, right? All right. So this comes to tip number five, stay mindful. Such a buzzword, you know, it's mindful. Everybody should be mindful, but seriously, we know that highly restrictive diets are not sustainable. This leads to the, that yo-yo dieting, you might lose some weight, but eventually it's going to come back and likely more. And that sucks when that happens. So don't let that happen to you. And you think, okay, so why does this happen? Remember when you were a kid or yeah. even as an adult, if somebody tells you not to do something, you, you're going to do it, right? So you're going to be focused on that. And then eventually you're gonna say, I can't, I can't, I can't. And eventually you're gonna eat that and more. So you're derailing yourself with that. So just priving yourself is not the right answer. That's being your mindful. All right, look at that beautiful piece of cheesecake. Here it is. So I'm sure you're wondering about those mashed potatoes, the, the gravy, the most popular one I hear, we have questions of the day all the time is that stuffing. Maybe it's dessert. You can have it. Think, I'm not telling you not to. Think about that plate method that we just talked about. It put it on your plate and enjoy it. You don't have to overeat it. Just enjoy it. This is the season of of sweets and treats. Instead of feeling deprived, you can have something. Then it's better to have something now and keep it in proportion than save keeping it for labor later and overeating it. Have a little bit enjoy it and move on tomorrow is a new day and friday is no longer thanksgiving right so you can get back on that routine but you should enjoy it while you're eating it shouldn't feel guilty all righty then that seems like this talk is going really fast for me if i'm not talking too fast for all of you all right so then there's a question where should i start I want you to start with one thing at a time. This is Ryan. This is a current client. Sorry, Ryan. He doesn't know I'm calling him out. This is Ryan, but he's making progress and I thought you should all see him. So I want you to start with one thing at a time. Maybe it's something that we're talking about today. Maybe it's something that you've already thought about that that's where you want to start. Most of us know what to do, but we can all use accountability. There's so much information out there, and I know it can be really overwhelming. Um, that is seriously one of the biggest things I see is it's just so overwhelming to put it together. So this is a, my passion, food. I love food, and I like making food that tastes good, that I can enjoy. So if you're interested in something like that, I'm here to help you do that. And then there's the question, when should I start? Now, you should start now. You knew I was going to say that, right? There are a couple more of um, my client success stories. These are just a few. Um, I have an, a couple other few sitting here, but I'll tell you, there's no good time to start. There's always going to be something. You hear us say at the gym, walking through the door is the hardest part. You've already done that. You're here, aren't you? So you've already made that step. Congratulations to you all. You should be very proud of yourselves. Remember this too. 
It's simple, not easy. I say that all the time. Take that first step and make a commitment to yourself and start now. No sense in waiting for the new year. If you're thinking you're not ready, I hope you keep all of this stuff that we're talking in mind. Um, you don't just try not to derail over the holidays. Think of that that plate method. But if you're not ready to start now, maybe just start thinking about it. I will tell you that we will have in January our most popular program that um, Bill and I run is a, um, we've actually switched it up and we've combined two of our combina combinations into a 12 week total transformation. And that's gonna be beginning in January. It'll have full on nutrition as well as three times a week in the gym. Um, if the gym is not for you and you want to get strong at home, we got a program for that too. Um, before we get started on questions, any questions that you guys have, again, thank you to Ashley um, from Cryoactive. If you guys haven't tried Cryoactive, I highly recommend it. I find it very helpful. Um, all right. So let's open this up to some questions. I'm going to... Anybody? Anybody have any questions? I do. All right. Always. I so I do all, all of the cooking for a big family and a big group of people for Thanksgiving, Christmas, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and even New Year's Day. I cannot get past cooking and tasting my way through the holiday. I mean, really, you know, I mean, my way through the cooking for the meal. Everything I make, of course, I have to taste, including the stuffing or, you know, everything. How, how do I deal with that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's a good question. It's a, very, it's a very, it's a very good question. So I guess what I would tell you is to, to limit the size that maybe, maybe if you have, I don't have one right here, but like a small ramekin or just a teaspoon, you know, like just a little bit. And then if you, have, you know, rather than tasting it all through the process, just wait till the end, see what it is. Most likely you've made it enough times that one taste, maybe two is enough. And then don't eat any at dinner. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm usually so full, I can't eat it. <laughs> right? So you don't even need it. But yeah, so just be careful of how much you're actually eating. It looks like Bill has something to say about this. <laughs> I would like to just give answers based on what we do. And we, we prep every weekend. And it's very common that, let's say on a Sunday, we're food prepping for a couple hours. We don't have dinner. Yeah. Yeah. We won't have a bowl dinner we'll, because we picked it what we cooked all day. So she did say that and then took it back. But I would say if that's an issue for you, just really eat a small dinner because you ate Lisa, a lot of it. Was and just don't be, don't be self conscious about people thinking like, Kathy, why don't you have a plate? Make it make a big plate and, and just don't eat it. Right. Nobody will really pay attention. But we do that all the time. There'll, there'll be so many times I'll say to Stace, all right, you want me to cook this or that? And she's like, well, no, we don't anymore because we know that if I plan a good meal at the end of the day, it just ends up being added to the food we prep for the following week. So. Um, but Lisa, Lisa had a good comment in the chat. She said, let your dog, I know you have cats, so let your cats lick the spoon, get rid of the spoon. <laughs> so that, was, that was good, Lisa. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's no real good answer than just don't do it. And that's, you know, that's really hard, but I, I get it. We all, we all do. Right. So just try to maybe limit the amount, the times that you're testing it. Hey, taste that salad every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. That's not what I taste. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't either. How's this pecan pie taste? The stuffing's really good. Oh, a little more <laughs> salt. Now, did I taste it again? <laughs> Kathy, you sound just like me. <laughs> I don't know where Kathy, I got it from. Is, Kathy, one day is not going to derail you. I mean, it's not one day is not going to hurt you. Let's say you overeat on Thanksgiving. One thing we've done in the past is we take the food that we don't want 
in the house as leftovers and we make sure we give it to people to take away. So let's say you, you have a big day on Thanksgiving, just make sure that Friday and Saturday and Sunday are not repeats of all that food. That's what gets you into that. That's the enjoy it. But I, I do hear you, Kathy, with the tasting, just a little bit on that spoon. And maybe limit it to, how about this this year? Try this, L limit it to three tastes, little spoon, not, not the big spoon. What other questions do we have? I have one. Um, you know, I'm down in Hilton Head right now and we're eating out every night um, because we want to. And we've had smaller meals in the day, but it's really hard to do the plate method in a restaurant. I mean, I get a salad, or I get vegetables, but I know that the meat and the potatoes cook way more than what the regular, you know, I'd have to eat a salad bowl in order to. <laughs> yeah, so Bob, that's a really good question. So there's several ways to go about that. One, maybe you and Lynn share a meal and get an extra salad or an extra vegetable. So you're sharing the, the protein and the starchy carb. So say you're getting a steak, okay? You have a steak and a baked potato. You each get half of that. You order an extra side of vegetable and an extra salad. That's one way. So now you're sharing it. And um, usually when you're out, the, the meals are huge. It's way more than you need. Another thing to do is maybe you're out and you want lunch for the next day. You don't want to eat out that lunch. You can ask for a box right away. There's nothing wrong with it. Restaurants are used to stuff like this. Ask for sauces on the side, but ask for a box right away. Cut that potato in half, cut the steak in half, put it away. It's off your plate and it's out of sight. You're not going to eat extra while you're waiting for the server to take your plate away to box it. It's already there. And now you have lunch the next day. So Stacy has my, um, that's my thing where I ask for the box right away, but I also get double vegetables and sometimes don't get the meat. I mean, the um, <clears throat> starch. And if there's bread on the table, I'll have one piece of bread, a, li a little piece of it rather than the potato or whatever, or I take half home. And if bread's the thing for you, and I know Bobby, you like your bread, but maybe just ask them not to bring the bread and you know, unless it's a restaurant that you know that bread is so worth it, then you're going to enjoy it, right? But so often they bring you these cold rolls that aren't really that good. You eat it anyways, right? That's just not worth it. So pick and choose what's worth it. Okay. Is that helpful? Yeah. Lynn's not sure that I'll just have share half the, the meal with it. <laughs> <laughs> She's little. She doesn't need much. He never shares half the dessert with me. <laughs> but you should share, right? There's nothing wrong with it, but enjoy it. And maybe not, maybe not, there's not dessert every night. Don't go to Frankie Bones so often. <laughs> what other questions do we have? Lisa, I don't know you, Lisa. Nice to nice to see you. She's unmuting herself. I think nice. you've covered everything, and, and then what we just talked about eating out is you know, record. What Bill? Lisa, weren't you a member at our gym years ago? You look familiar. Your name's familiar. Um, I was introduced to you guys uh, by Scott Sherman a long, long, long time ago. Yeah. Back in Lake, I, 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 I know I've seen the name. Yeah, I worked out with you. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> oh, welcome. Anybody else have any questions? Lisa, any questions? Cheryl? Well, like alcohol and stuff, is alcohol more like, should I treat that more like a dessert or just, I know, limit it, but. Yeah, that's a really good question. Like, so this is, so this eggnog. is. Uh, eggnog, is that what you said? Well, eggnog, yeah, that's more, that's like desserty. That's very desserty. So put it in a very fun cup that you enjoy and sip it and enjoy it. 
and maybe limit that like if it's eggnog to one cup but like yeah. this is we're talking the holidays but in an everyday scenario let's say you were having dinner and you're having that steak maybe forget the baked potato or whatever and enjoy the wine so yeah. think of that wine as your potato okay i know it's not the greatest of answers but at least that's your carb think of yeah. alcohol as your carb okay and that's in your everyday world in the holiday world you just have i mean you're not going to maybe maybe you're going to be that good that you're not going to have any of the starches because you want the wine or the eggnog but just yeah. watch the portion and enjoy it and move on tomorrow's a new day there's no eggnog <laughs> usually i take the food and just do the alcohol yeah right <laughs> kathy <laughs> good idea <laughs> What food? What dinner? <laughs> You're with family and all. I'd rather do the alcohol than, than food. Every day is Thanksgiving. <laughs> what else do we have? I know other people have questions. No? No. Okay. You, you must have done a good job. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I hope, I hope this was... Hold on. I'm going back to... Hold on. Let's see if I can... Um, hold on. Remember, I told you this is my first time here. <coughs> All right. Um, again, I'd like to thank Ashley from Cryoactive. They're very generous. Um, tomorrow, you guys will all get a replay of this. And we are also, there will be a winner for um, Cryoactive, the $99. And also we are, CrossFit Cleveland is giving away a um, free month of light classes. So um, that will be in, in the, the replay that you get tomorrow. I know there was a lot of information out there. It's not sharing the, the right screen. There it is, happy holidays. Um, <laughs> if you're looking for additional help and dive into your nutrition, longer short term goals, schedule a coaching call with me. We'll see if we're a good fit. And you can reach me through um, the text that you've been receiving. If you have any questions, most of you know how to reach me. Um, my, I can give you my cell phone number. It was on an earlier screen. But I guess that's Stacy. Stacy. Yes. At the bottom of your workbook, you have the AHA sugar recommendations. But you don't have numbers to work with. There's no numbers. All right. No, it says teaspoons for women, teaspoons for men. Zero. Oh. <laughs> so the, yeah, the real answer is get rid of it. If, if it's addictive, right? right? Um, but six teaspoons for ladies, nine teaspoons for men. I, you know what? I don't have the grams of that. Um, I do, and it's not popping into my mind. I'll get you an actual amount, but it's really not much. Yeah, um, right. When you're looking, this is, is going to go into like, maybe we'll have another one of these soon, but this will go into like how to read a label. But if you're looking at a label, um, Kathy's saying, yes, I want another talk. All right. Um, <laughs> now that I'm a little less nervous, I'll do one, Kathy. <laughs> um, so if you're reading a nutrition label, try not to have something that has over seven grams oh. per serving. Okay, so remember that per serving is really important. So if you're looking at a can of Coke, right, usually there's two servings in there. So if there's 28 grams of sugar, I'm just throwing out numbers. I don't know what's in it. But if there's 28 grams of sugar in that Coke or then and it's two servings, you have to double that number. So you don't want to drink that whole thing because you are going to be on a sugar high. But yeah, oh, the classes before I, I look at a lot of that as far as the sugars. Sometimes it doesn't stop me, but I still look at it. But do you enjoy it? Enjoy looking at it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's just made me more aware. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about reading labels. I mean, how many, everything I read has sugar. It's amazing how they hide the sugar into everything. Yes, it is. It's, I know we're off topic. That's okay. It's amazing. 
I love food and I love talking about it. Yeah. And I love alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I get it from. Oh my. Why <laughs> we're all friends. Right? <laughs> Any other questions, Jamie? Jamie's one of Jamie. You lost how much weight? I had uh, dropped uh, thirty, and wow! And then yeah. uh, this summer with the the foot thing, uh, I put on uh, another twelve, so I'm I'm down oh. still eighteen. So, um, but that's why I'm back in here again, just to uh, just get my why back and figure it out, right. and get ready before the holidays because I, I I know I'd pig out so. Good. Um, avoid that. So I needed this. I needed just a little boost again. Oh, good. You know where to find me. I, I think what's good about this is, you know, come Thursday, you're going to go to the table, or at least I'm going to go to the table and I'm going to think twice because we just talked about it all, you know, rather than I say I'm going to take a little bit. This time I think that I'll, I really will take less. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. And I don't have, like most most of the side dishes are going to be sweet, and I don't like them, so <laughs> that'll be good for me. Can I throw in a chip from me? Sure. sure. Um, so let's say you have that stuffing and that mashed potato gravy, and this, and you want to eat it. So think about savoring it. Watch. It's so easy to take a bite, and take another bite, and take another bite. And you get that satisfaction from having that taste but you could get the same satisfaction if you just get one bite and just Stacy laughs at me makes fun of me that I can eat a half a recent eat the other half but I mean I eat like three pieces and I, I put them in my tongue and I hold them and I just I love it but I could easily see eating three and I wouldn't feel any more satisfied it works with everything just Savor that food. Just so it's not slowing down. So it's just savoring. There's there's a thing called chewing slow, right? But it doesn't mean you're mentally enjoying it. You're just saying, all right, the old guy said chew slow. No, really enjoy that food. Get every ounce of or every bit of taste out of it. And you probably have and you'll be happy. Try that on Thursday. Well, I think we should all get together on Friday and say how successful we were. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Happy hour Zoom call. We haven't won. We haven't had okay. one. I think that would be fun. Happy hour Zoom call. <laughs> all right. We're, we're overdue for one of those. <laughs> Any other questions? I'm going to add stuff home with your guests. But thanks, Lisa. Yeah, it is. It's good to hold ourselves accountable. But it's, it's not the one day that's the problem. The one day in moderation is easily attainable and it's the rest of the days that are important. Right. Well, if you, if you keep that plate method in mind whenever you're eating, that will help you throughout. That, that will always keep you on track because you're going to get your vegetables, eat them first, have, you know, savor that that starch or carb or wine. You like your wine? Lisa, I got your message. I see it in the chat. I'll give you a response to that. Sorry, you. that was put on a list of things that I was gonna have topics on for my four minutes with Bill videos and I haven't gotten down to that. Um, I will get you some information back. That's not my expertise. No worries, it was just a, uh... You know, when you put out questions, I'm like, let's yep. have at this, Bill. <laughs> I, I know another uh, gym owner that in the area, that's her specialty. Oh. Um, now, but I'll, I'll get you something. Uh, thanks for the reminder. Did I, I was just reminding you how we connected. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, perfect. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Nice to see my family. Friends. Thank you. Big round of applause for her first live Zoom screen. Yay! Oh, you did good. Very 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 good